Hey everyone, Double P here and welcome back. So today is uh, Thursday, January the 20th and uh, the trade that we took today was uh, uh, Beyond Meat. Uh, so ticker symbol BYND. So let me come over here and we're going to go over uh, my account. And if I'm not looking at you as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at my screens here. So everyone's always asking well is that a real account this and that blah 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 well yes it is so over here we've got stock so i've got real feeds for amex new york stock exchange um nasdaq all right so real-time feeds there and then we got equity options. Equity options is also in real time. Future and futures options, I don't trade them. Uh, that's why I don't need the feeds on for it. And Forex and other is all real time. You see my margin account right here clearly says <laughs> margin account, right? So this has been going on for about six months now. So yes, it is the real live, and I'm a real live trader one of the very few on YouTube that actually does live trading and shows you their results. Good, bad, ugly, whatever. So today, what we decided to do is we decided to uh, attack uh, Beyond Meat. So what I did is, uh, what do we always do? What's the first thing we always do? First thing we always do is we always draw our box, right? Because when you draw the box, you know where and how and when to trade and what type of strategy that you want to use to be able to trade. So as you see here, uh, BYND, so Beyond Me opened up above the box and it opened up way above the box. So what happens is when the stock opens up way above the box, what usually happens is if it's not a strong directional trend, it'll come crashing back down. As you see, it came crashing back down and it hit the box, right? This is the death zone. Nine times out of 10, we don't trade inside of the box, right? Because that's that's range. It's bouncing in a range and you're gonna get chopped up. What you wanna do, if that's the case, is you wanna do spreads. You wanna do vertical spreads, so you can do a credit spread, you can do a debit spread. I guess you could do a, I guess you could do a condor, but I don't fool around with those low strategy, uh, plays like i'm a bread and butter type of option trader so i'm i'm either bullish taking a directional uh, biased or i'm going to sell premium and i'm going to do it in such a way that uh, i account for volatility and i make money so beyond me what was the catalyst for beyond meat so let's kind of go over what the catalyst was for beyond me beyond meat and uh beyond meat uh, let's come over here. Um, I don't think I have my news on for Beyond Meat. Uh, well, what we can do is we can open this up here. Oh, I open up my sidebar, which means uh, I don't have the news. But Beyond Meat and McDonald's are basically moving into a deeper partnership and they want to uh, push more product across McDonald's uh, ecosystem. So that was good news. Traders love to hear that. That's why the stock went up uh, like 6% pre-market. And it opened up kind of strong. So let's come over here. Uh, let me come back and let's go to two days so that you see what's going on. Right. So we see here Beyond Meat hit a high of 69 bucks right and then this is all in pre-market so it was super strong in pre-market then crashed all right stair stepping down to where it opened up all right here's the box opened up above the box all right so what i decided to do was okay uh, now that i see what's going on and this is super bullish by the way as I'm cutting this now, what time is it now? It's 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Beyond Meat's on a, on a little bit of a tear. It's bullish. So what did I decide to do? Well, uh, spoiler alert, uh, I bought a vertical. 
right? And I went big on my vertical. So on my vertical, I uh, bought it for 58 cents, sold it for 72 cents. That was a 25% profit on Beyond Meat, All right? So let's come down over here and then you'll see uh, my spread closed out. So I bought the, uh, so right here on our spreads, I bought the 67, I bought the 67 call, right? And I sold the 70 calls, right? So debit spread right there. You see, you see the overall profit and loss right there. It came out to $4,200, exited the spread, right? So in a situation like that, you can do spreads. I did a spread. Uh, why didn't I do the 67.68 spread? Well, because the spread itself wouldn't have netted me a lot of money. It would have been basically useless. I wanted to do a $3 spread, right? 67.70, it's a $3 spread. That's, uh, I'm looking at paying half of that, so that's a buck fifty. I got filled when I got filled at the 58 cents, so I actually paid another a less 25%, almost 50% premium on that, right? Or 47%, whatever it was. And it turned out to be really good directional, it turned out to be really good spread. There are times to do bullish spreads and there are times to do bearish spreads. And there's a time to sell premium. And this was a, this was a particular time where this thing is just taken off. Beyond Meat is just taken off now. I love it, right? And I probably should have stayed in this a little bit longer, but you know what? When you make that when you make that much money on a spread, you'll never hit a hundred percent of your spread. It's very, very, very rare that you hit a hundred percent of the spread. So I decided because of the contract size and because it was kind of difficult to get in to the spread and it was difficult selling the spread because of the volume, let me go show you. So um, what am I gonna do here now? Uh, let me just let me just uh, tell you it was when you get into a spread you got to look at the volume you got to look at the volatility you got to look at the you got to look at the uh, uh, what am I thinking here I haven't eaten breakfast yet so I'm a little bit loopy um, you, know, you got to think of the contracts uh, the open interest sorry and the volume when you're doing spreads the volume is not going to be that much. So you have to say to yourself, and the spreads are going to be a little bit bigger. That's why spreads are the way they are when they're calculated. So you got to think to yourself, what am I going to do here? It's okay if I get in, but I got to be able to get out. So you have to look at, you have to look at, uh, you know what we can do? Let me come over here because I still have it on the analyze tab. Let me come down here. So I analyzed. Um, what do we got here? What do we got here? 67.60. Yeah, so I have it all analyzed down here on the Analyze tab. And I was looking at it. So I was looking at the plus five. And I was looking at how much money can be made on the plus five. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go deep. All right, so let's come over here. And this is, uh, I do day stepping. So one of the things with the Analyze tab on Thinkorswim is a lot of people don't understand uh, when you're doing uh, day stepping is you need to be able to uh, move the actual um, the option to the, not to the expiry, not hold it to the expiry because this is all set up to be held for expiry. So you kind of want to day step out before expiry and then use one. I'm going to create a course around this, actually a couple of modules inside of my membership site, and I'm going to kind of go through it. Don't really want to go through it here now because it's pretty ninja uh, when you do it this way. But basically, I was looking at this spread right here, plus 10%, minus 10%, looking at the profit uh, right there, plus 330%, minus 91. If the spread were to turn against me, you see the profit potential just on five contracts, right? So uh, I'm looking at that and I say to myself, okay, well, um, let me come over here and let me do 300 contracts. 
right? And then you'll see, uh, you'll see right there, right? Same thing, plus 320%. We're looking at a profit of 60 grand. If I was to hold this until that time, but I don't want to hold it that long, right? I'm an intraday momentum option scalper. So what I want to do is I want to be in and I want to be out. I don't want to be holding this until, I don't want to be holding this until, uh, you know, uh, expiring. That's the worst thing that you can possibly do. You want to be in and you want to be out. Where, whether you're doing a vertical, whether you're doing uh, a call or a put, whether you're doing a condor, whether you're doing a butterfly, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be holding to expiration unless you want to actually, you know, acquire the stock. You want to buy the stock. Do I want to buy Beyond Meat? No, it's a piece of shit stock. I don't want it. For me, that's my opinion, right? Uh, um, you know, this is a good day in, day out kind of a thing. Would I do a swing trade on Beyond Meat? Probably not. I just, I'm, a, I'm a momentum trader, so I'm in and I'm out. That's kind of my bread and my butter, right? So that's it. So, if you like this video, you like how I looked at and talked about the spreads, I just gave you a quick glimpse of how to analyze spreads and how to look at your profit and loss and how to make a decision, um, how to get into the volume. There's a couple things here that I'm going to uh, create a couple modules around how to look at spreads and how to actually get into spreads and how to look at the volume and the open interest, um, how to look at the implied volatility on it. And how to do it intraday to make a, you know, to make a, some, some good cake. All right. So if you like this video, uh, smash that like button, smash that like button, smash that like button. I'd love to get some more subscribers. I want to help you guys out and girls head on over to the site. You're going to see a link to my site, head on over to the site. You become a member of the platinum traders, better tester group, and we'd love to have you on board. If I am speaking to you in a non uh, whimsical manner, like I'm not excited or I'm not like you know pumped up, you know, don't worry about it. That's not the that's not the that's not part of the game here. The part of the game here is to be profitable, to be an executioner. Part of the game is to be a highly profitable, highly skilled options trader. That's it. I don't need to put joy into it. I don't need to you know pump everybody up. That's not the that's. I don't want emotion in this game, right? Uh, my style is a quant-driven, rule-based system. Uh, emotion's out of it, right? Do I take red days? Sure, I'll take a couple red days here and there. It's happened. I don't get emotional about it. It is what it is, right? Do I get pumped up when I get, get big green days? Same thing, you know what I mean? I did something right, right? When I have a red day, I did something wrong. I gotta figure out what did I do wrong? Was my thesis wrong? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Right. So, you know, I hope you guys uh, take that for what it is. It's based on experience. It's based on knowledge, applicable knowledge. Leave emotion out of the game. Get profitable. Be a deadly executioner. Know what you're doing. So with that being said, my name is Double P. I'll see you guys in the next trading session over and out. Take care, everybody.